I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. The coming dictatorship. Are you a marked man? Welcome to the Carter Report. Here's John Carter. We're talking today about the coming world dictatorship. We're going to answer the question and ask it, of course, are you and I marked men and women? I must warn you, this talk is totally politically incorrect. So maybe you're going to hear some things today you're not going to like. But I can promise you one thing, by the grace of God, you're going to hear the truth. We're going to go to a prophecy in the Bible that most people totally ignore. It's Revelation chapter 13 that talks about the lamb that becomes a dragon. Totally politically incorrect. But after all is said and done, what really matters? What really matters, my friend, is the truth. Now, some would say that this talk today is heresy. They'd say, why don't you let sleeping dogs sleep on? But I would suggest to you today that those dogs are well and truly awake and they're snarling at our heels. And so today the question is, are you a marked man? Now we're going to come in the scriptures to Revelation chapter 13 and we're going to read verse 11. Then I saw, I saw another beast, another nation, another power. A beast represents a nation or a power. Another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Now, he doesn't start out by speaking as a, a dragon. He starts out speaking like a lamb, which, of course, represents Christ, but he ends up speaking like the devil. Years ago, when I was working over in the great city of Dallas in the great state of Texas, I would walk down to the Trinity River. We were doing some television work and I'd go down to the Trinity River and I would gaze down into the waters. And there I saw a little turtle, the Texas turtle. He was a great little Texan. He was swimming against the current and he was doing great. He was swimming against the current. But the trouble is the current was going faster than he was swimming and therefore he was swimming backwards like some of us. Now you and I need to learn to swim against the, the current but we need to go faster than the current. Now he had an, I noticed he had an outboard motor strapped on. It was only 50, uh, 50 horsepower. He needed 250 horsepower and then he could go faster than the current. I want to tell you today we're living in times when you and I have to swim against the current. And there's something that we need desperately here in these great United States of America, and that is knowledge, the knowledge of the truth. Not just a lot of raw emotionalism and a lot of religious talk. What you and I need uh, is the truth, even though the truth is politically Incorrect. Now, in Revelation chapter 13, you've got two beasts. And these beasts represent two great powers and two great kingdoms or two great forces in the world. Now, the first one is found in Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. Notice this. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea 
having seven heads and ten horns. This is the dragon. And on his horns, ten crowns uh, representing the kingdoms of Europe. And on his heads, uh, a blasphemous name. Now, what does this represent? Well, if you notice, if you don't mind, verse 5 of the same chapter, uh, verse 5 of the same chapter, it says, He was given a mouth, uh, speaking great things, blasphemies. He was given authority to continue for 42 months. And every person knows in Bible prophecy, the 42 months represent 1260 days, which were symbolic of uh, the Dark Ages, when uh, the great Antichrist church uh, ruled uh, the world. And may I remind you of the words of the great, great professor and church historian, Dr. Wiley. He said these words, The noonday of the papacy was um, the midnight uh, of uh, the world. This was a time of prelates, popes, priests, paganism and uh, persecution of the people of God. And this is symbolized by the first beast. Who, who teaches these things today? Oh, not many. But this is completely un-American. No, 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 very American, because this is what America was based on and found out. I can't, well, you, this is just the facts. This is what was taught by the pilgrim fathers who came to this country. This is the truth. The Dark Ages, time of superstition a time of man-made religion. There's nothing worse than man-made religion. A time of persecution. Many thousands, even millions, were tortured and killed during the time of the beast. The beast is not a derogatory term. It simply means a power in Bible prophecy. Revelation 13 and verse 7 says, Revelation 13 and verse 7 says, it was granted to him to make war against the saints and to overcome them. All authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And this is a correct description of the Dark Ages when the church ruled the world. Thousands, tens of thousands, uh, millions of people who were dissidents, who thought for themselves uh, were taken into these terrible places, the places of the bloody Inquisition and tortured and put to death because of their faith in Christ and because they believed the Holy Scriptures. And the sad thing is this, that most folks went along to get along as it is today. You've got to go along to get along, but where are you going to get along to? Conformity, I would remind you, my friend, is the pathway to mediocrity, also the pathway to apostasy, and the easy road always leads down to hell. Now, here is a statement from Newman out of a manual of church history. Uh, this is a profound statement. I will try to get through it, but it has so much in it. The points in which Constantine and his followers favoured Christianity may also be regarded as involving evils. Uh, when he put restrictions on idolatry, he fostered a spirit of intolerance in Christians and led them to trust in physical power rather than the power of the truth. The same as today. When he enjoined the universal observance of Sunday, it ceased to be a spiritual and became a legal festival. When he offered temporal inducements to the profession of Christianity, he not only brought multitudes of unregenerate people into the churches, but he also aided in making it a part of public opinion to regard the profession of Christianity as a mere form, as it is today, and to attach a magical significance to the ordinances, as it is today. The church became a persecuting power, making use of the civil authority for the suppression of dissent. Now, Constantine lived about 300 years after Christ. And he was the Roman emperor 
who became, quote, a Christian, unquote, but he was pagan to his black soul. But he joined, my friend, with the church. Uh, Here's another statement from Newman. Uh, Newman is a great church historian. He's not a part of my church. He, He says this, The church has persecuted Christians far more cruelly and has destroyed vastly more Christians than pagans uh, have done. The Diocletian persecution is as nothing when compared with the work of the Holy Office and the Holy Office is talking about the office of uh, the papacy. Now, we're not talking about the present Pope. We're not talking about this. We're talking about history. Nobody has persecuted more Christians uh, than uh, the great church of uh, the Dark Ages. So, listen, the first church of Revelation 13 is the church of the Dark Ages. This is what was taught by the Puritans, the Pilgrim Fathers, all the early Americans. They don't know it today. They're not teaching it today, not because it's not American, but simply because uh, they don't know it. So the first beast of Revelation 13 is the Church of the Dark Ages, reborn, vigorous, deceptive, active, and here now. Hey, is this too strong for you? Well, there's stronger stuff to come, so you better stay tuned. Revelation 13 and verse 8 says this, All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. The Bible teaches that the first beast that ruled the world in the Dark Ages is going to come back with tremendous power and the Bible says the whole wide world is going to fall down and worship. The question is, are you, am I? Are you, my friend, a marked man? How is this going to be accomplished? Well, it's going to be accomplished, my friend, through the second beast. Now, I know that some of you who are listening to this, you're absolutely stunned and you're blown away. You say, I just can't believe this. This is what was taught by all of the great churches in America, by all of the great churches in Great Britain. In fact, when I was just a boy growing up in Australia, this was taught in virtually all of the churches. It was bread and butter religion. But we have come to dark times as far as truth is concerned. But Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Are you ready for it, my friend? Can you take this? Am I being too politically incorrect? Who is sufficient for these things? Now we come to the second beast of Bible prophecy. The first beast is the church of the dark ages. Revelation 13 and verse 11 down to 13 and notice it if you will. Then I saw another beast, another nation coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb. Hey, he acts like Jesus. He talks like Jesus. He is a Christian power. Two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. Verse 12. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. He gets all the authority of the church of the dark ages and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. He leads the world back to the church of the dark ages. It's happening today. The first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And so here is another power that comes upon the world scene. This is a power, my friend, that comes up like a lamb, has two horns like a lamb, And the lamb is the symbol of Christ. The lamb is the symbol of the gospel. And even though this power comes up like a lamb, this power ends up speaking like a dragon. And it is his work to lead the whole world back to the worship of the church of the dark ages. Let me tell it to you as plain as I can. Are you still listening to me? 
You're saying, I, 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 you know, I just don't want to take any... Well, I want you to listen, my friend, because your soul salvation may depend upon hearing and understanding this truth today. This power that comes up like a lamb with lamb-like horns is a fake Christian power. The lamb is the symbol of Christ. He has a worldwide influence. In fact, this power that comes up like a lamb becomes the greatest power in the world. And it is this power or through this false religious system in the last days that the whole world uh, is forced, with the exception of a little remnant, forced, uh, coerced uh, to get the mark of the beast. So the question is directed as plain, it is powerful, it is poignant. The question is, are you, my friend? a marked man. This power not only has a worldwide influence, but this power does miracles. Revelation 19.20 is significant. Revelation 19 and verse 20 says, then the beast was captured. Ah, that's the first beast of Revelation 13. The beast was captured. Who captures him? God does. And with him, the false prophet, that's the pseudo-Christian power, the one like a lamb, the false prophet who worked signs in his presence. Oh, he's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Listen. This pseudo-Christian power that arises in the last days that has a worldwide influence uh, is, let me say it again, it's fake man-made religion, but this is a power, my friend, uh, that works miracles. And because the multitudes are so ignorant of the truth of the Bible, they will be deceived uh, deluded and damned into getting the mark of the beast. Therefore, I ask you the pertinent soul-searching question today, my friend, my brother, my sister, are you a marked man? I would remind you of this, that religious deception, religious deception is the biggest game in town. Remember, Satan was once in God's in a circle. Satan knows everything about religion. The false prophet is a great liar. When I was in Russia some time back, I've been there 49 times, but some folks were making, some crooks were making bogus counterfeit $100 bills. It was mighty hard to tell the difference. You had to be an expert. I want you to become an expert in telling the truth, in unmasking deception. But this power, my friend, uh, is the great counterfeiter. Satan was the first liar. He is the master of deception. I've told you the story from the Kremlin. This happened in the days of the Soviet Union. There was a new member of the governing council. And the communists said, put up this bogus lying plan. And this young man said, comrade, comrade, but it isn't the truth. (laughs) And then there was a stunned silence. And then they started laughing. They laughed and they laughed. (laughs) They they laughed until, (laughs) until they fell off their chairs. (laughs) <laughs> and then in the end, the chairman said, Comrade, what we say, whatever we say, it is the truth. And if you don't understand that, comrade, you'll be on your way to Siberia. You see, the communists were liars. They did not understand the truth. But Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Look at John 8, verse 32. Jesus said, 
you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you want to be free, then you got to know the truth. People say, I, what, what, what I believe is the truth. No, it's not, my friend. The word of God is the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Uh, facts and opinions are different. You can have your opinion. I can have my opinion. We can all have different opinions, but we all, we all can't have different truths. You can't say, hey, I've got my truth and you've got your truth. No, my friend, there's only one truth. And I need to bring my opinion into humble conformity to the truth of God. Now today, in the world, in America, millions of people are being deceived. Look at John chapter 17 and verse 17. And notice John 17 and verse 17, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Ultimate truth is found in the holy word of God. The truth that you need to be saved. The truth that you need to get home to the kingdom of God. The truth, my friend, is found in the word of God. Now look at John chapter 8, 43 to 48. These are the words of our blessed Lord. Why you, don't you understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Same as today. You are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Lying comes from the devil. If you and I tell lies, it's because we are not children of God. It's because we are sons of the devil. And this power, my friend, that comes up is a liar. So the second beast we're talking about today is a religious power that is filled with lies while talking about Jesus. It is fake Christianity, but it is not the same as the Church of the Inquisition, the old church from Europe that followed the Roman Empire. No, it is found uh, in the New World. It starts out good like a lamb, but it ends up speaking as a dragon. And some would say, it is happening today in America. And Satan is winning a great victory. I ask you the question, are you a marked man? He has stopped the people from reading the Holy Bible. Most people today are completely ignorant of the truths of the Bible. He's got the people so bamboozled, they've stopped thinking for themselves and they get all of their information from television and thus they're deceived like the Dallas turtle out of the Trinity River who thought he was doing great and he was doing great swimming against the current but the current was going faster than he could swim. I want you to notice now, now this is pretty heavy stuff I know but this is, this is the stuff that America was based on. This is what made America great. I want you to notice, my dear friends, the amazing work of the Lamb, this pseudo-Christian power that ends up talking like a dragon. Revelation 13 and verse 14, here is the text. And he deceives those that dwell on the earth by the signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. That's the Church of the Dark Ages telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast which was wounded by the sword and lived. And so the pseudo-Christian power makes an image to the church of the dark ages. When I was a boy going through college, I used to raise my fees by selling Christian books from door to door. And sometimes a young mother would come out with a little girl I'd learned by then a few psychology tricks. <laughs> and so I would say to the mother, if I could say it truthfully, your little girl is the spit image of you. <laughs> That's how I sold so many books. 
<laughs> what am I talking about? I'm saying the little girl looks like her mummy. The image of the beast that is set up by the lamb-like beast is a copy of the Church of the Dark Ages, which was a union of church and state, which is called a theocracy. Are you still listening to me? Let me say it again. What was the first beast? A union of church and state persecuting dissidents. Revelation chapter 17, oh, I think I'll deal with that in the second part of the program. But Revelation 17 talks about a woman seated on a beast. She's dressed out in gorgeous robes uh, and she's got a big cup in her hand uh, and is filled with wine. And she's persecuting the people of God. That's the church of the dark ages. And the Bible says, listen to me, it's going to happen again in America. More amazing truths. Don't go away. We'll be back. We're talking about the mark of the beast. The Carter Report is now streaming on demand for you. Now you can have the teachings of John Carter anytime, day or night. By streaming The Carter Report, there is more content for you to choose from, and it's easy. If you are new to streaming, all you need to do is purchase a streaming device. It doesn't really matter which one. You can buy a Roku, Amazon Fire, or Apple TV from any major retailer. You or a family member can plug the device into your TV and sign into your internet connection. Do a search for the Carter Report and download the app to your device. From then on, your device and the Carter Report app can provide you with hundreds of on-demand programs. You can also take the Carter Report with you wherever you go. The official free Carter Report mobile app can be downloaded to your phone or tablet. Go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the app. Additionally, you can find Carter Report programs on your favorite podcast. You can also watch us on Vimeo or YouTube. Type the Carter Report in the search box. You can watch hundreds of uninterrupted John Carter teachings whenever you want for as many hours as you want. Travel with John Carter as he circles the globe to bring the gospel to millions of people. Watch the Carter classics from over 50 years of ministry and gain knowledge from stimulating interviews with Christian leaders. You now have multiple ways to watch the Carter Report. And once you start streaming, you'll find comfort in having these teachings readily available to you whenever and wherever you want for free. Welcome to the inspirational world of John Carter. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.